Come on. <laughs> <We're not laughs> <laughs> you sure are. There you go. It says we're live. Praise the Lord. We're on there. There's Logan and Beth, uh, my precious daughter Beth from Georgia. And Logan, of course, he's set us up as a ready to go except i've got some things here. i've got to click off that are coming up just yeah, hold on right there we've start i'll get it <laughs> it's jumping go ahead and jump on there i'm gonna find it should be live it should be no that's not that was last week it's trying to come up over here Nope. There, it, there is. it is. There it is. We're live. Did you hit the arrow? Oh. Y'all, uh, just hold on. I'm trying to get it. So I can see when you're on. I had it, but it just, right there. there it hit, is. Hit, hit the arrow. Right? Oh, Lisa and Deborah and Will and Pate got a good group already. Now, this is this is my daughter Beth, our, our baby of our children, and this is Logan, Becky's son. How's it going, everybody? And they're just here to just tell y'all hello and how happy they are to be here, to just let you see them and let you know they're part of everything that goes on in my life, and they're wonderful, wonderful children that just bless Pappy and I all the time. And we, we're just so thankful. Hi, Joe and Carolyn. Thank y'all for coming in. And Deborah Huggins, declare healing for me from cough and right ear stop up. We, do, we declare that in Jesus' name. So I hope, I pray everyone's had a very good week and that you weren't affected by the storms or anything. Deborah's the one that prays all the storms away. She's on here tonight asking. For, Hi, Mary Ann. Mary Ann. Um, we have several Mary Ann's that come on. And one of them, I believe, is from Florida. Linda Jackson. Hi, Linda. Yes, we had a wonderful weekend with Shelby. Hey, Beth. Uh, we had many, that, Linda. How many were here yesterday? Maybe 17, 18? I think there were 19. There were 19 here. We were missing some of the children, local children. Lane and, and her husband went to Durham, is that right, North Carolina? Mm -hmm. They're buying a home there because she's going to be in residency there for four years at Duke. So they left immediately after she knew where she was going to be doing a residency to buy them a home and settle in there for four years. So she and her husband weren't here. And the other one was Trevor. Hi, Sherry. And uh, Trevor's uh, working in Wilmington, North Carolina. And so he wasn't here. But we had a good group, 19, and we had more fun. And Pappy was so engaged don't y'all think and he was so he was happy he it was it really blessed him lots of laughter yes and they the kids gave him funny cards and he and just it was just and people sent him cards so he was blessed don't y'all think he was blessed yeah we had a great time so and, happy's 86 yeah and uh yeah he was 86 years old yesterday and and been through a lot of things and god still has him here and he still has a sense of humor and he was very very happy he has one friend left that's his age, and uh, and they live in Stanton, Virginia, in the Shenandoah Valley, and he calls Shelby every Christmas and every birthday, and so he's still alive, too. So those two are really troopers, and they started, they were baptized in the Spirit by the sa at the same time at a Southern Baptist church, and the deacon, the pastor prayed for them, and they both were baptized in the Holy Spirit at the same time because they we had never heard of that until we were taught it from the Scripture. And so they're both still alive. And that's just amazing. They they enjoy talking to each other. And they just chat and chat and chat. You can't make sometimes half sense of what they're saying, but they're having a good time with each other. So that was good. And our son, Charlie, it did not make it, but they're going to come up within a month. I think he said, or maybe two months, but they'll be here before long to see Pappy and see, see all of us. So that's, hi, Kim Patterson. Hey, and Joe. Louis. Joe Davis, thanks for joining us. Hey, Rachel. Yeah, go Good ahead. to see you on here. Yeah. Good to see some familiar my, names. My beautiful children back here. 
Beth lives in Georgia and Warner 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 Robbins. Warner Robbins, Georgia. If anybody's looking for a home in Warner Robbins, <laughs> she's a, reach out to Beth Beth Ann. She is so she had five closings. Five something this past week, didn't you, Beth? Five yeah. something. Five offers yesterday written for properties. Yes. I mean she has been blessed the favor of God is so on she and her husband and her, and her husband's is working and helping her, helping her because she can't keep up. I think she's hired some. You've hired people to help mm -hmm. you too. She's hired people. It's amazing. The Lord is just blessing her in her life and just we're so great. Hi, Justin and Carolyn. We're just grateful for everything. That's all I can say. And and we're thanking the Lord that y'all are part of our family too. You're part of our family too. These these children, everybody hear about all our family, this family, and and, and everybody went. Hi, si, hi, Simona. We're praying for you, honey. Oh, your daughter hi, is beautiful. Thank you, Simona. Thank you. The, Simona's mother came here from I think Czechoslovakia. Where did she come from? Could not speak in English. I prayed for her, and she was born again. I prayed for her, and she Jesus filled her with Him. And she didn't speak a word of English. I was praying in English, and Jesus, Simona, you can tell that she's from Czechoslovakia. Mm -hmm. And look here, yeah, she said, and she was born again. She was. It was amazing, amazing. It was amazing that she couldn't quit hugging me. She couldn't quit crying. She could. She could not. It just. She met Jesus. What can you do except go crazy? She's, she stayed in Romania. So Romania. Close. Romania. Yeah. Precious, pre us. precious mother, yes. Have a great evening, Nanny. Thank you, we're Logan. Gonna, we're going to take off, but we really appreciate everything that you I do for you. us in the community, and, and we look forward to your message tonight. Okay, yes. yes. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody. It's good to see you. It's not quite time for us to cut. Oh, it's right now. It's time. Let's start welcoming the whole thing. I love you, children. Be careful. Uh, we, I welcome you to Master Touch Ministries. And I've heard from a lot of people t this week through um, through the phone, through messaging, all that has never clicked on here. I had no idea. We have no idea who's watching us. And they said, not only we, or am I watching, I'm watching on YouTube also. She goes back and watches it. So I'm just so grateful. Yes, Will, thank you. Will lives in Colorado with his beautiful family. And Joe from o from Ohio has been with the ministry for many years. Oh, my goodness. She used to sing in our, we had a, in our meetings there, we had a choir. Well, it wasn't a choir. It was just people that were on the team that loved to worship. And, oh, my goodness, the Spirit of God was on all of that. Dawn, honey, I love you. I'm praying for your husband and for that home you're looking for, too. Uh, so let's we welcome the Holy Spirit to come into every home now. We bind every demonic force that's trying to block anything or, or hold back anything. Now, and I need, when I pray this, I, I want everybody saying, yes, agree with me. Agree with me because I'm here, but y'all need to agree. So things are happening in Jesus' name. And, and so we ask the Lord to forgive us for all of our sins, known and unknown, to cleanse our hearts that we don't have any evil intention towards anyone. And those that have hurt us, we forgive them, and we ask you, Lord, to bless them. And when you can get to that place, you know that you've really, really walking in the steps of Jesus. So we just thank Jesus for what he's going to do tonight. This is his meeting. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Jesus is going to be here to just do it all. And I just, I want Danielle and Rachel Catherine and just happy birthday. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Danielle and Dawn and just I'm, I'm, I will miss some of you but I will like last week uh, I went off I went back and I prayed for some of you some of you I kind of left uh, some notes and I then I prayed for everybody that was on my phone uh, within the week you may have been prayed two or three times and Al, well y'all all pray for every morning not by name but when on here it's by name hi sweet Alina and Lisa I want to just get started because I, you know, I love to give my, the, the main thing we're going to be breaking that one thing we break every week is jinxed and sabotage because jinxed and sabotage both are demonic curses or demonic. There's a, it's a stronghold to put it that way, but the jinx is a curse. So, and they go together usually. 
So that's the point we're going to be breaking tonight. And I've had people call, and I pray for this a lot. I get this a lot on praying for people. But I had someone call me this week that is a, works with the, uh, race horses, the big, some of the big time race horses. And this is exactly the word the Lord gave me over her when she hung up. So we're breaking that off. And she's not the only one. We're going to break those off tonight. And they're going in the name of y'all say, yes, they're going. You may be on your family, one of your family members. The jinx thing is you'll do real good and sabotage. And then it's just pulled out from under you. Are you starting? You're working. And then somebody else gets it. It's, it's huge. And it's real. We thank Jesus for the truth. That the truth is setting the body of Christ free. That he came to deliver the captives. And we are being set free by the blood in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you, everybody watching us tonight. We'll be set free from something. And there were breakthroughs this week from last week. There were breakthroughs. Maybe not what you were specifically, but there were breakthroughs in your family in other ways or in your job or something. I got several things in on this. So let me just start with just some of our little information. We have 12 new followers. And now we have 900 and something on that MT of that new site, which is wonderful. And because we're really not doing a lot of advertising, we have six new page likes. So we have a total of 10,100 page likes this week. In the last seven days is what they just said. And of course, the 18 to 44 year old males are always almost double the females. And it runs into 6,000 something for males and 3,000 and something for females over the world. It's, it's what Facebook is saying. Uh, countries that are, are, are leading and watching us, Armenia is number one, and Madagascar has come back to number two, which was number one for a long time. And Dela Timor Leste, and that is the Southeast um, Asia and the Southern edge of Indonesia. And then, let's see, and then India, and I said Pakistan, because we have that one pastor that had all the, they had another meeting and had I don't know how many more people saved. He sent a lot more pictures. Emmon was his name. Emmon. Um, let's see. Then we've got India, then New Guinea, and Nepal, the Philippines, Ethiopia, and Nigeria. And uh, I said, and then uh, Sierra Leone, and that's West Africa. Those are the ones that are leading. At the top of the white people watching. We're so pray we are praying for every all you every country. This, that means that you are really getting in, and we pray God touches you tonight and brings into your ministry or just into your home or into your church where you go new fresh things from the Spirit of Almighty God and brings it into all of us too in Jesus' name. Let's see. Um, the one that the pastor last week was ASEF and then Malik and from Pakistan. He's from Pakistan and they are having a May. He said that Pakistan will be saved and they're praying for America also. And he wanted me to pray again for some things. And I, I didn't get to because I was just real busy handling what we're going to. Don't forget about um, masterstouchministry.org. You can download prayers on there free. And don't forget... Um, that you can, you've got a prayer line, and you and you can email me at uh, at uh, uh, Linda at, at a Linda at aol .com. I believe it's what it is. Linda at aol .com. Linda, I can't even. Say. I'm still getting over COVID. I need y'all to pray because it's it's really been something, and I made some mistakes last week, and uh, I just you know I, I was thinking, should I even keep trying to teach because. I don't want to ever teach anybody wrong. But I think I said 600 million um, Hebrews left uh, Egypt, but it was 600,000. But in one place it says two, and that was just men. But another place in num numbers it says 2 million. So I don't know, but I, if I said 600,000 million and stuff, then just forget that. And the other thing I said was we were the we were the vine. Of course, I know that. We're the branches when we're talking about who we are and how we've been grabbed grafted into the vine. So, but that those are the kind of things that COVID is really touching my brain. And I'm asking, my husband too. We're, we're gradually, I think, might be getting better, but I said that God has promised us a sound mind and that's a promise that's ours. And the devil's not taking it over any COVID in Jesus' name. 
And I took ivermectin, and we had the antibodies, you know, all that. But anyway, the Lord's healing us. But if I, if, if, you know, if I keep doing that like that, though, I'll wait till I'm better healed. Okay, let's see. Um, and my book, Let My People Go, by uh, Linda Blankenship, Holy Fire Publisher, that you should be able to get it from Barnes & Noble and Amazon, but some people, I've called them, and they will not call me back. So I'm going to have to get on that again. Uh, let's see. I was going to share some deliverances we've had this week, and then we'll pray and get start. you know, go on into the teaching. People want to know, this is helping people understand the deliverance ministry. And I spend a lot of time praying with with uh, people that, when they call me, they're usually really, uh, have, you know, gone where they can't feel like they can handle it and things like that. But these are some that, and some have been back several, on the phone, this is all prayer ministry, several times. And some were back a while and then back again because some other, you'll get deliverance and then you'll do really good and then you'll start feeling like, uh, you're bad again, but what's happening, the Holy Spirit's pulling up the next stuff that's down in there. He restores your soul, and that takes you all the way back and restores you. If you look up restoring a home, they take it down and they restore it. He restores your soul. That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. So that's what that's all about. But let me just just try to, I may not get it. Okay, the first one that I, that, that I wrote down was a hindering. I was praying for a, a young man. It was in, I got the spirit hindering. And then underneath, because that had happened, doubt had come in, and so he got delivered from that. And a negative force, because when when you when you, when you pray and pray and things are hindered and you, they don't break through, hi Christina, honey, I just love you, and you don't. Then this is what happened to him. Uh, doubt set in, and a negative force, and these were spirits, and they and he's gotten rid of them. And then press down had come in. And this was interesting, and I'm not sure if it was a curse, but I almost have to think it is. I saw a shell that looked like a turtle in his brain, and it and it was full of por por porcupine needles. And every one of those needles had caused him pain in all kind of ways. It was just, it was an amazing what the Lord showed me. That I got that we got that out by saying the blood. You can you can. If you know, if you feel like you have rejection, you can say, I renounce rejection. I submit myself to Jesus and start seeing the blood of Jesus. You overcome Satan with the blood of the Lamb and submit yourself to the Lord. Resist the devil and he has to go. I'm trying, you know, so you can start doing some things too. But anyway, this was, and then because of all of that, because of what I just read, he had become unbalanced mentally and, and, um, uh, Oh, and then at the end, I saw the Lord turn a nozzle on and water started coming out. So he got his answer. That's what happened with that one. When the Lord turned, a hand went in and turned the nozzle on and all the water just, it never stopped. So the Lord got that, that group. They're, they kind of group and I call them nest if you get the big one. The big one on this one was Hendron, the strong man. Okay, I hope y'all are enjoying all of this. I don't like, I'm not glorifying Satan. I'm glorifying Jesus Christ, the price he paid to bring deliverance to the body of Christ. He said to the disciples, go cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, uh, speak in new tongues. Uh, he, you know, he, they, everywhere that he sent them out to do that. So I'm just sharing it with you so you can really understand it is real. Okay, the next one. Was most of these things coming from trauma or generational things being handed down on you? This was a trauma on an older person. Uh, it was a man, and um, his wife got him to call me. Incapacitated was the very first thing I got under that trauma. Overwhelmed, frightened that whatever it was that happened to him, and I I, I don't go into all that, but. He, he left. He was frightened. Life, just life, and he struggled. He, he the one of the uh, strong things that came out was disjointed. He felt disjointed. He felt, and it was disqualified. There was a spirit in him called disqualified that kept him from, kept this going on where things weren't working out, and 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 struggling and disjointed. They all go together, and uh, insignificant was in there. And then all that came out, you know, I, I see, so I pray and say the blood and I fight till it's gone. 
till I see it go. And then y'all all know I bind them to the pits permanently and close the door and seal it in the name of Jesus. And I, then I turn them back over to Jesus, do whatever he wants to with them. And I do the same thing with us. Well, I saw a black hole in him where all of this was. And, and, and so I started dedicating that part of him back to the Lord Jesus Christ under the control of the Holy Spirit to totally have that part that had been damaged under that control of these things that they were, he was being made whole in that area. That black hole disappeared and walls started falling down everywhere. And it was like he just walked out into open fresh air. So he was delivered. And he, you know what? This is just one set of things. And who knows what else will be behind another thing. I never know. For me, in my life and walk with the Lord, from uh, it's been 55 years now I've been praying for deliverance for people. I was praying when I didn't know what I was doing for myself. But anyway, the Lord honored it. And I still don't know. The Lord has to do it. I'm just obedient. Uh, aspiration. Oh, this person had great aspirations to be successful in the field he was in. These are all men so far. And they, it never, it didn't work out. It would work out, but it just, he never did just get where, where he thought it would be. So under the first thing was depression. And then gloomy. And, uh, and then I got transitional. So I don't know if this thing transitioned to him or if the Lord was telling me he's bringing that out of it. And it was irritable, and then the Lord filled him with the Spirit. Now, this is a marriage that's been going on, and, they, and they've gotten, and this, this is a husband and wife, but they're different times, and, and I don't discuss one with the other one, you know, but I'm just want to, I want to give this to you. If you don't ever have an unemotional affair, don't ever have it. It's not worth the price. Don't ever have an adulterous affair. If you're married, stay married. If you need help, get help. That's all I can say. So this is with this, with this couple, and I, I may not even, I hope it makes sense to you because it's been different times and I've tried to kind of keep up. I don't write down anything, but with this couple, because I've been with them for a while, I, I sometimes keep praying. After I actually own all everybody, I keep praying. Usually, after I finish with the, uh, a session on the phone, the first word was disenfranchised. Was the very first thing that came off of that. It was the man. In this case, it was man. But let me tell you, they're saying seventy percent men and women have some type of affair or affairs in marriage. Seventy percent is the rate right now that they that, that they come up with. But the first thing here was the word disenfranchised. And that, I, I looked it up, and it means alienated, disqualified, unequally yoked, uh, a double heart. Disenfranchised. And the next word, these were all kind of new hypothesis. And... And I looked that up, and it said it, it's a, it's you, the person tests to see if it might be true. An idea that is prepared um, is prepared, but uh, it's an argument. So it, it I'm not even sure what I wrote here. It's tested that it might be true. So there are. If they're if it's somebody they're trying to connect with, th this hypothesis is working with that. And y'all can look it up because I looked it up and had all kind of. I was trying to find something that fit in. With, uh, it's an explanation for a phenomenon, tested to see if it's true. And and you thoroughly study it. It's something not yet proved to be. Um, Correct. It's something that's not yet in that person proved to be correct. Uh, you studied to get the answer. That was, and you can, there's more in there, but that's just because the next word was incognito. This is under this first session back. This might have been just recently incoming. And when I prayed against that, I looked that up, there was a mask, there was a mask covering this person, toe mask from head to all the way. 
It's like you're looking at it, you're seeing him, but actually there's a mask on that you couldn't see. It's a mask covered all over, and it, and I got cruel and camouflage. And then I saw that thing started peeling off of him. I got heretic. If you have done this, these are words that the Holy Spirit is giving me for someone. And a heretic is uh, infatuation, <clears throat> injustice, stark reality. And what it causes to the female, to the opposite, to the opposite person that's in this relationship, the, uh, the marriage partner. This is what it calls under heretic. Uh, it, disgrace was the first thing listed. That person feels disgraced. Your mate. Lost, she, they feel loss of honor. I was praying for the lady. And this is on again. They, they feel disapproved. They feel, uh, well, humiliated was a big one. They feel stigmatized. They feel like they're in the doghouse and they're under cloud and they feel like they're being ridiculed. And they have a lot of shame and they did nothing. 70% of men and women are guilty of this. And if you're in this group, you better get on your knees and cry to God Almighty to forgive you because he's not fooling around with this kind of stuff. If you're calling yourself a Christian, then be a Christian. And then I got infidel on him. It's a person holding an opinion at odds with what generally is accepted or correct. And it talks about Christians. It talks about Bible too. Where you where you hold a position that's unbiblical. They, you're an infidel. Repent. Repent. God's merciful. He will let you start over. He'll wash it as if it never happened. But the person you have to deal with is the person that's been wounded. The mate. Because the, I read, there's so many things, so many things that's come out of this uh, person that's unbelievable. And it exactly happened to her. Then I was just praying with someone um was this a young college kid? You know, I've got a bunch of kids in college, but their friends call me. One, I was in New York. <laughs> now, I mean, they call, I've got friends calling these kids' friends call me. Just, thank God they call. They call me nanny, all of them, all over the place. These college kids. I got a curse of three on this young man. And I saw a cactus. I saw a huge cat. I mean, it was huge. And the curse was a, th uh, it was a thorn curse. And then I got a hex off of him, broken off of him, and uh, a rituals broken off of him. And he's had all kind of all kind of troubles. This whole family, I bet I, it's probably on the whole family, because they've had things unbelievable happen that wasn't even justified. Uh, and then I prayed for this man. This was not. This was another man, and I got insignificant. And the, and the Lord gave me a vision of two toes missing. And then I, we kept, I kept battling that and breaking that. And then I saw two baby shoes, and two baby shoes that were tied together. Two toes missing and two, and two, two baby shoes that were tied together. And under it was tarot cards. And I'll tell you another big one. That's all I'm going to go on tonight. And I hope you, I pray that this, I pray this glorifies Jesus Christ. He sees what's going on. He knows everything from the end to the beginning. And he's a merciful God. He, he forgives us and we have to forgive. But, but the truth is, wounds happen if, if this goes on in a, in a marriage relationship. Deep wounds. And then they have, that person has to be delivered from everything the devil dumped on them when the shock hits them. And so repent. And get yourself straight. And for the person that did it, there's guilt and condemnation, enjoyment, joy and all that. But in the end, when it's all over, because they say most of these affairs don't last more than two years. Then you get yourself, you just, then you've got to start healing and get yourself straight so it doesn't happen again and protect yourself in Jesus' name.
Okay, that's that's all I wanted to tell you. But this all happened this week, but there's a lot more. There's more people watching night that that got call that got a call, and there's people waiting all over. The place. I can't, you know. And another thing I wanted to share with y'all tonight: my throat on this side. It's on this side. I don't know. It's on my left side bothers me after I teach and try to do warfare prayer. And I'm going to watch it tonight. I've, I've asked the Lord not to let that happen. But if it keeps happening, I'm going to have to drop the teachers and just do the prayer because I, it's too much for my what's going on. I'm straining my throat. And it happened last week, and I just couldn't even talk because it was just, it was really, I was just waiting for it to settle down a little bit. So if you want to pray about this week and that my brain clears up that I don't, that they forget, you know, I had a little bit of it anyway, but it was in a normal range because I, you know, I talked to my uh, granddaughter that's that's going into psychiatry, and she she said, "Nanny, you you don't, there's nothing wrong with you." You know, but then I had COVID, and then there's a whole new story. So I talked to her again, and she, and uh, because about taking one of those brain um one of those brain things they have. I well, I looked at Prevagen and my daughter and and. And my granddaughter said it only had one thing in it, and there's some other ones that have a lot. So and they're all there's five that are up at the top. So anyway, I'm thinking most because of my age and all that maybe that will help me. Anyway, I haven't started yet, but I'm thinking about it. Y'all just pray I do whatever the Lord has for me to do, so I can make it to the end. Because this is what He wants me to do. This is what He wants me to do. What I'm doing, and I'm not stopping. And I just love the Lord, and I'm not going to get forget to blow. And there, there's a, a lady that asks for prayer for her sister that's witchcraft is about to destroy, and she's not a Christian. And this girl is has come out of all of that, and she's a Christian, loves the Lord, and we pray for her several times on here, and the, and she's getting miracles every time we pray. Now she's asked to pray for her sister, and I don't know her name. So Linda Jackson mail texted me a while ago, and I haven't had time to answer anybody. But I read the text, and she said, why don't you mention the Liberty Bell tonight? So I thought, well, it doesn't really fit in. But then I thought, yes, it does, because it's about deliverance. It's about setting the people free. I thought, oh, my goodness. My ministry is intercession and deliverance, and there's a lot of healings through that. So, And called out healings, too. There's been a, hundreds of people healed that way also. But the main thing that the Lord called me to early was deliverance. And he's taught me so much about it. And I, there's so much I don't know. I mean, I'm still learning. But anyway, I just I thank God for, for, for what he's done. So this is what I do want to share about the Liberty Bell. In 1976, this country had its 200th anniversary. And, um, and the scripture on the Liberty Bell is from Le Leviticus 25.10. And it says, proclaim, proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. And that's what's on the Liberty Bell. And then it goes on saying, it shall be a jubilee for you to return to your home and your property. And what it was, and it was it was a 50 year jubilee and the slaves were set free. Well, if the body of Christ is, needs to be set free as we are slaves to so many things, it is now. Well, I the Lord early said to me audibly, sitting right by Shelby watching a football game. You'd see the Lord talk to you, but I heard him because it was inside and it was loud. And it, I had I didn't even I had to go get the Bible out at the seat to find it. And he said to me, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you from dead works, serve the living God, make Christian jewelry. That's what he said to me. And so I say to Shelby that, and of course he, and I thought he's going to thank you, you know, I, but it is, I found that scripture in the Bible. It is in the Bible. And the Lord God Almighty spoke audibly that to me. So I started making Christian jewelry, jewelry mostly sterling silver. And Nancy that's on here, she and her husband helped. I was making jewelry and selling it around Norman, Oklahoma, around the University of Oklahoma. All those little gift shops carried it. And uh, so I'd been making it. So I, I was already into it. And then uh, the centennial was coming up, and I had a dream. Either, either the Lord said, "You need to make something uh, Christian for the bicentennial," or, or and then the bishops were also in on it. There was Shelby; they were our closest friends, 
And so they, we all three went together to get this Liberty Bell out. And, um, and it, and it was, it was this big. I mean, it was big. You, uh, well, famous basketball player wore his on TV forever. Uh, and B.C. Clark carried it, and he carried 14 karat gold and sterling silver. And that scripture was on it. You could read every word of it. You could read it, Leviticus 25.10. We sent it to, to Washington, D.C., to President Ford and his wife, Betty. And, we, and they sent it back and thanked us for it and told us it would be on display there in Washington uh, permanently for the bicentennial for America. In that group, there'd be a group of uh, things like that. So my, that bell is in Washington, D.C., right back in 1976. And uh, after that, I made a, I did a little bit more jewelry, and then it, it was kind of, it just closed, it was time to close it down, and we moved. And <clears throat> so anyway, that's the story of the Liberty Bell. But if, if America ever needed to be, it proclaim liberty, and I'm trying to proclaim liberty of you can be set free through Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit and the blood. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all the inhabitants, to all the inhabitants thereof. And it was it was to be a year when the slaveries would be slave, when you were in slavery would be set free. A lot of you listening to me are in slavery and different things. God wants to set you free tonight. Start renouncing if you know what it is and, and start working with me and start saying the blood. The anointing's going out to set the captives free. And it's Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, carrying it out to you to set the captives free. Now, I want to tell you something else. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in all this number stuff, but there's something been going on with me for, for the last three or four weeks, and I see triple fives everywhere. There's something new that. And so I knew after so many, the Lord was speaking to me. So I went and looked it up. What does the Bible I don't want you to get into numbers because people get this witchcraft. There's a lot of that out there. Everything's numbers. The Bible does have a lot of back numbers, but you better be sure it's God. I, I mean, I've seen triple fives during the middle of the night. I, just, I can't even tell you where all I've seen the last two or three weeks, maybe four weeks. So today I thought, I need to look that up. There's something because I saw it again today. So I went and I said, what does the Bible say about five the number five and what does it spiritually mean and you can go you can put numbers in they take your psychic and all kind of don't i went to the bible and this is what they told me five means god's favor god's grace god's goodness and it's mentioned 318 times in the bible and it also has in it redemption and deliverance because grace really covers it all but they went on to say there's so many things about five in there and if it's double five or triple five it means it's going to be double whatever the lord's telling you and i'm thinking is it more is he going to start doing really serious you know, more stuff about deliverance since linda called me dan out of the clear blue skies that talk about the liberty bell i don't know but i do know he's doing something okay and i was and my sin you my throat's been attacking my but he, the devil's not going to win. So there's five. Uh, I tried to just quick and just a few minutes ago write down all the five. Let's see. There's five books in the uh, in the Bible that only has one chapter. The height of the sanctuary, the tabernacle, was five cubits high. Uh, there were five curtains. There were five bars, five uh, pillars, and five sockets. And that an altar was five by five. Uh, there were five. Uh, I believe it says no, 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 no. That's not it. The anointing oil had five parts. Um, there were five books of God's law. John wrote five books. It means it's, it, it means grace. It means it's really big in grace. So God's doing something. I mean, I'm just telling y'all, do not get into numbers. You can get so messed up and be led astray. But this was from the Lord. And I have been praying for deliverance 55 years. 55 years. And, as a, and he just reminded me of that. So, and you can look it up. It's in the Bible 318 times, about five. 
and now I've shared that. So thank you, Lord. Uh, I think that's all I had on here to share from this sheet. And that. So we thank you, Lord. I want to read just some healing, deliverance scriptures, and we're going on. I'm not going to pray right now, but just so the it, the Word of God it has life on it, and it's and it's and it's uh, resurrection life. And I'm sending it out to everybody that needs healing and deliverance, and, and that includes me. It is written. My promise is that God has not given me a spirit of fear, and I don't have one, but love, power, and a sound mind. And I claim that, in Jesus, and for my husband, in Jesus' name. And that we're healed, that the soul is healed in Jesus' name. It is written, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. These are all of his benefits, who forgives all of our sins and heals all of our diseases. But you ask for forgiveness and heals all of our diseases. He redeems our life from destruction and he crowns us with love and compassion. He sends his word and healed, and healed them and delivered them from all of their destruction. See, that's deliverance and healing I was just telling you about. Surely he was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. I bind this word of God into where your problem is. I am binding this word now with life on the breath of God on it to deliver you and heal you now. Everybody starts saying amen, and my brain, and Jesus... I anointed myself with oil. That Episcopal priest gave me a bottle. Yeah, it's a friend of mine, and I and I love him. And he brought me this bottle of anointed oil, and so I just did my head. I'm I'm healed in Jesus' name. This stuff is going. This COVID stuff in Jesus' name. He healed them all. That's Luke six nineteen. He went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. There's a strep throat being healed right now in Jesus' name. If two of you agree is touching anything, it's going to be done. That's what I'm saying. Agree with me. Say, I agree for everybody that needs this, especially cancer, COVID. These are plagues. Every kind of plague we're renouncing right now and commanding the healing and freedom. Every kind of disease, sickness, infirmity, plague, whatever it is, it has to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to set the captives free. Everybody that needs deliverance, you start renouncing it and commanding it to go and save the blood. And don't stop. And praise. If you get in the middle and you feel stuck, start praising. That's a big one for me. Jesus went about doing good and healing all those oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. God is with us tonight. We're, we're Christians. God is with us. So if your finances is being healed, whatever your children need to be, whatever, start saying it. Beloved, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul prospers. I bind that into all of us in Jesus' name. Lord, I bind all this into all of us in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm just going to do one or two more. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he has to flee. And that's James 4, 7. Every believer ought to have that written out. And you do that with your mouth. You submit yourself to the Lord. Resist the devil and he has to go. Just start saying the blood of Jesus. But you do sit, submit yourself to him first. Draw near to him and he will draw near to you. For the word of God is... Living, active, sharper than any double sword, edge sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of your soul and spirit, your joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and intents of your heart. And let the Lord do that because that way then you can get delivered from stuff that's in there that you've forgotten about. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loved you, your Lord. Luke 10, 10, he has given you power over all the power of Satan and nothing can hurt you. <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> John 5, he watches over his word to perform it. Thank you, Jesus. We bind that in dust. John 8, 32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Okay, that's all. That's all I'm going to do. 
Now, I read a wonderful, wonderful psalm this week. And I'm just going to get bind this into all of us. It's so powerful. And I wanted to put it out on Facebook of my story, and it's just too big. But I went through and just marked ones. I'm binding all this into every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind anything that hinders us from touching every life that ever watches this. I wash you, saturate you in the blood of Jesus. And I bind the helmet of salvation on your head so you can hear and, that, and so that you can hear and see what the Spirit's saying to, to, to us as the body of Christ. So anybody, the unbeliever, that they're going to be born again before this thing, this session is over. So I'm just going to go through and pick out verse because it's real long. Just the ones that I want to bind into all of us. It's so powerful. And it starts out, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. So I bind into all of us that his strength is our strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Lord, I bind this whole scripture into every one of us, the everything that you're all of our rock, you're rocked all of us, you're our fortress, you're our deliverer, you're our strength, you're the one we trust, you're our buckler, you're the horn of our salvation, you're our high tower. And I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And we bind that into us that we're praising you, Lord God, because you have saved us from our enemies. Lord God, we bind that into us that every one of us right now are being delivered and saved from our enemies in Jesus' holy name. Uh, the sorrows of death comp compass, compass, compass me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God and heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. So I'm binding into every one of you that's crying to the Lord for an answer that you, he, that you right here, that your cry is coming before him, even into his ears. He, I bind that into you. God is hearing you with his ears tonight as you cry to him. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. I'm binding that to every one of us in our children, loved ones. Anybody that feels like they're in deep waters, many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy. I'm binding that to God Almighty is delivering every one of us from our strong enemy. And from that which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Anything that you're facing is too strong for you right now. We bind the Lord God Almighty into that situation that's going to take over. And do, and and get it get you free in Jesus' name. We're all agreeing. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my state. The Lord God Almighty is going to stay with you and get you through this. I bind that into you. The Lord's going to reward me according to my righteousness, and it's it's Jesus Christ in you as your righteousness. Thank you, Lord. My hands are clean too. I kept the ways of the Lord. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. And that's all his, his he looks through, at you through the blood. And all of this belongs to you if you're a Christian. And I've already told everybody to repent. With the merciful, thou will show thyself merciful. And with the upright man, thou will show thyself upright. With the pure, thou will show thyself pure. And with the forward, thou will show thyself forward. For thou will save the afflicted. God, every one of us are leaning on you for cleansing us, forgiving us, and making us righteous in your sight through your blood. And therefore, you will save us from our afflictions and will bring down uh, anyone that has high looks uh, that would, would torment us in any way in Jesus' name. For you will light our candle. The Lord my God will enlighten our darkness. God Almighty, I bind to you all this that he's enlightening, putting light on your darkness where you can't see what's causing it or what's wrong or the way out. Uh, we agree and right now for all of us that God is enlightening all of our darkness in Jesus' name. For by thee I have run through a troop and by my God have I leaped over a wall. And I can tell you this has happened to several, many people. But I'm going to tell you one lady I thought about tonight there was a, uh, a huge denomination that's in error that 
one of her friends was trying to get her family to come and be a part of that church and she knew it was wrong and she didn't want to go and the whole church faced it and the oppression that came against her was horrific it was not even if, and she's probably on here. This was many years ago, and it's, in, it's way out in another state. She and I got in the car, and we went to war. And this is the scripture. After much war for several days, it was like suffocating her, the oppression that came on her. The Lord gave us this scripture. We got it. it right from the Spirit. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. That was he, what he gave us. We knew we had the victory right then. God, and I'm binding that on every one of you that are fighting a battle, that God is going to cause you to run through the troop of the demons, enemies. Even if it's people, you have to understand it's demonic behind it if it's not good. Satan comes to rob, steal, and kill. He, he uses people in circumstances. And I have come, Jesus said, that you would have life and have it abundantly. I'm binding that into you. And you and, the, and then when she leaped over a wall, that meant she went. Oh, it got over it, and 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 that thing was gone. For who is God save the Lord, and who is our rock save our God? So Lord, I thank you that you're planning to everyone the security of knowing you are our rock and that you're God, our God. My God has girded me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Lord, you said you correct all of it. You would make our crooked places straight. So thank you, Father. I bind that to all of us and our loved ones. This is to you, me, and all of our loved ones. That God is girding us with strength and making our way perfect in front of us. Oh, Lord, thank you. From now to Jesus comes, we bind that into us. He makes my feet like hinds feet and sets me upon my high places. Those, those deer can go four, four can land on a little rock. They can go all the way up to the top. That's how he He's making our feet. We're going to get to the top. No rock, no distance, no height, no depth. It's going to take us. We bind that in us in Jesus' name. He teaches our hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Oh, have I seen things like that broken in praying in the spirit? So God, I bind that to all of us. We're going to see the devil, the strength and power totally destroyed in our lives and our loved ones in Jesus' name. And you have also given us the shield of our salvation. And our right hand hath hold, and your right hand holds us up. And thy gentleness has made us great. We bind that into all of us in Jesus' name. You have enlarged our steps under us that our feet did not slip. Lord, thank you, God, that you're doing it. I'm binding it into you. The ones that need the words of ice them go to you first. And get the, and, and and plow. Play in and deposit this into you with the power of God to make it to come about. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. That's deliverance ministry. Praise the warfare. God, I thank you. You're equipping all of us to be free in Jesus' name. Uh, and it goes on to say they fell at your feet. Yeah, they fell at our feet, but they're bound back to where they came from, their master. For you have girded us with strength for battle. Lord, gird every one of us with strength for battle. And bind fear that no one fears going into that area and getting set free and getting free in Jesus' name. And and then he said, he girded me with strength unto battle that has subdued unto me those that rose up against me. So right now we decree that every demonic force is being destroyed that's coming against you or your children or your loved ones right now, Jesus. And a permanent, that is permanent. The doors are closed permanently and forever and dedicated every door back to the Lord Jesus Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit. And every door is closed and sealed with the name and the blood of Jesus. Thou has also given me the neck of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. This is all the, the, do, to do with the, the demonic kingdom. And whoever's, whatever's coming against you, God's giving you the victory. You, it is ours in Christ Jesus. It is ours in Christ Jesus. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. He is the God of your salvation and he is your rock and he is alive for you, for you. 
it is God that avenges me and subdues the people under me. Because it's the people, Satan uses people. He delivered me from mine enemies. Thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. God, thank you for delivering everybody that's listening and that will be listening to Jesus come. That you are delivering them tonight. That the devil's plans and assignments are right now bound permanently in favor. The strong men and the network of demons with them all bound permanently. Those assignments we degree are are destroyed and do not exist anymore, that they're burned up by the power of the fire of the Holy Ghost, that no enemy has any plans or assignments against any of us. They are destroyed and bound permanently, permanently in Jesus' name. Therefore, I will give thanks unto thee. God, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. We adore you. Thank you that you're faithful to us. And that I will praise you among the heathen and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance give he, give he his king and shows mercy to his anointed. And, we, and we're anointed, we've got the Holy Spirit in him. And to his seed forevermore. That is Psalm 18 in the King James Version. And some of them kind of put in our words. Psalm 18. Read it and decree it over your loved ones and your family. And then over everybody that, you know, in your church. You, everybody's got to get involved and get uh, get in and get busy. So I think my grandson titled this tonight. Um, I, I'll have to look at it afterwards. Mary Ann, honey, I love you. Dawn, I love you. I saw Joe. Now everybody's name's gone again, so I can't keep up with it. And I don't want to mess up here. Um, Linda Jackson. Thank you, Jesus. I, we talked about man last week. We talked about leaven and unleavened bread. Remember, and and uh, unleavened, he didn't. He told you know they had the the Hebrews celebrated with a with with a celebration of uh, unleavened bread, which means it was free of yeast, so it didn't ferment. It was free of sin, really. And so we're going on tonight to talk about manna and the bread again, but it's a little bit different, isn't it? And I pray that you, it may not seem like it's much to you, but it's deep. God wants us to know who Jesus Christ is to us. He doesn't want it to be a shadow like it was to the, the Hebrew people. He wants us to know the living Savior. If you listen to me right now and you don't know Jesus like I didn't know and I was real active in the church and all, but I didn't know him, bow your head and from your heart cry for repentance. Ask, ask the Lord right now to show you the Spirit show you his holiness that you get a, a glimpse of his holiness and that everything in you cries out for repent to repent invite him into your heart ask him to forgive you that you made a mess and that you need a savior because you can't save yourself you've tried everything some of it works another all of it then it falls apart i need a savior he's he's jesus christ the son of god there is no other way to the father except through the son and it's Jesus Christ. And he says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Not anything else. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. This deliverance ministry is, 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 lift, is lifting Jesus Christ up. Because that's one third, they say, of his ministry was deliverance ministry. And healing. And salvation. So invite him in and just say, come in to my heart. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Fill me with your spirit. Speak to me. I want to know you. And stay with it to you. And you stay until you have a witness inside. It's not you will witness inside. Something will happen and you'll know he's come in. And he will be with you forever. And you talk to him, he's, he's, he's closer to you than a brother or a friend. So that's for salvation. Okay, the old covenant children of Israel, uh, when in the wilderness, God supplied them with bread. He, he said it's going to rain down bread from heaven to them. Uh, it was a substance for them. It was really a substance because, because his food, actually what it represents is, is the word of God to us. So we're looking at a shadow back here. They all saw it under a shadow. We are seeing the very substance of all of this. This, only, this. It is only as we feed upon Christ himself that we truly find the written word. That is really alive. See, Jesus is the Word. 
in Revelation, it says he wore a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And it goes on to say, and on his clothing was with King of Kings. And, but it, he, and John calls him the Word of God. Right, John 1, 1, just read it. He is the Word of God. Jesus Christ is the Word. He is the bread that came down from heaven. So tonight, we're going to be looking at this, the, the Lord Jesus Christ as a bread of life. True bread manifested and given to God's people. God told him he was going to rain through Moses. He told Moses, I'm going to rain bread down from heaven because they were starving. I mean, they were really, you know, they were no food. They were hungry and actually wanted to go back to Egypt. And God supplied for 40 years. They ate manna every morning. They caught it was called manna to them. And that's what I'm going to really be talking about. Okay, they came out of the Red Sea, and now they wind up in the wilderness of sin. It's called the wilderness of sin in the Bible. I just read it. The whole God, whole congregation murmured and complained against Moses and Aaron, his brother. And I, about the Lord was going to kill them because they didn't have food. They were hungry. They wanted to return to Egypt after all, all the miracles. The Red Sea opening up and then killing all the enemies and all and getting all the gold and silver and all the wealth they took out. The Egyptians gave them and they went with it and all the things they saw. And then now they, they were hungry. And that's what they were saying. To, to They were murmuring and complaining. So Israel arrived in the wilderness of sin. The whole God, congregation were murmuring against Moses. And, and God uh, reigned bread from heaven for them. And he, he, he talked about their unbelief and ungratefulness and their rebellion of all the good things he did. Those, those are some of the things that came in, came out of the of these people. Now you have to understand, one place says 600,000 men, not counting the women and children in the works the works work with them. Just men. And the other place says 2 million. So there were a lot of people and they had a lot of mixture there. There weren't Hebrews. They came with them. So they were dealing with them. A lot of that was their problem. When I was reading it, that's what I picked up on. Uh, the same picture. It, it said when, about this manna. They called it manna. This bread came. They looked and they saw the glory of the Lord. So the glory of the Lord was mentioned in in reference to this bread that's coming from heaven. It's the same thing. Jesus Christ came and his glory came. And he comes to us in our wilderness of sin. You know, he sends his bread to us, the bread of life, Jesus Christ. We, he, when he comes down to us, we're in a wilderness of sin. It's no different than them, but they didn't understand. We understand Jesus is our Savior. They didn't. Because they, you know, that had not happened. But everything back there foreshadows Jesus Christ and our and us today walking with Him, the Spirit of Grace. So, the first time the glory of the Lord that I could find was mentioned was when it had something to do with a, with a, a manna or the bread coming down from heaven, and they they named it. Moses called it bread. And now some of the pastors here. Because I, you know, I'm not a scholar, and I didn't have time to re really research this. But everywhere I read, they called it bread. And Moses called it bread, but it says they got together, the Hebrews and the, the, the and those that were in there that were mixed, and they came up and said we were going to call it manna, and they called it manna. But God told Moses he was going to rain bread down, but they didn't. They didn't see. They called it manna. And the, he was trying to tell them that the bread of life was go, would become, but it was in a shadow, and they never, ever knew that. We can look back and understand it. And they call, said, what, 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 what they said about manna, they said, what is it? That's what they were saying. What is it? That, that was the word they said. Of what they called manna was what is it? And they named it manna. They would they wouldn't take bread. Moses had told them it was bread. Uh, I I wrote down his Psalms called the calls it angels' food. 
when Moses first, uh, when, the, when the bread first fell, it said it was very significant. This is Exodus 16.1. The Bible says it fell in the wilderness of sin. And that when he comes to us, the bread of life, who Jesus calls himself the bread of life, it comes into our wilderness of sin. That's six, Exodus 16.1. That the bread from heaven first fell. That's when it first fell. And then I'm going to keep going. So just hang in here with me. Because it's you can see us in all of this too. And as we're getting close to Easter season, and I, you know, and, and and we're getting close to all of the grace and all that Jesus did for us. The sh the manna is the symbolism of Christ, the bread of life. That's who that really represented. That's what he was telling Moses. The old covenant, this this connects the old and the new covenant together. The the bread, the bread right there connects the two covenants together because it was talking about Jesus Christ. Truly, the true bread of life. In Exodus 4.15, the Hebrew, that's where it says the Hebrews named it manna. Moses said, no, it is the bread which the Lord has given unto you. That's Exodus 4.15. He tried to correct it. The children called it manna. The, no, the old covenant was a shadow of things to come. And a new, a new covenant is the substance we walk in today. That bread of life, if you know Jesus. 1 Corinthians 13, 3, which is the new covenant, uh, the covenant of grace and the blood covenant. We're under. Uh, this is why you know, it was talking about Jesus, it said, all ate the same spiritual food, for they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them, and that rock was Christ. This is talking about the Hebrews, because the water was right there by the time the manna came in, where he stuck that rock. And so first John, no, John 6, 48 says, Jesus Christ said, I am the true bread of life. Your fathers ate manna. Now he's naming it what they named it, not what he called it, in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that came down from heaven that we, that if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread I shall give is my flesh. So, when you talk about in communion or talking about the bread, it's his flesh. Jesus said this, which I will give for the life of the world. He calls it the life of the world, which I will give for the life of the world. And I know I mentioned this some of this last time, but you, you need to remember a lot of it because you can't remember everything. It's only as we feed on Christ himself that we truly feed upon the written word, the bread of life. And you, the word of God is is Jesus, and you got to know it. And here's it was in Revelation where where the robe dipped in blood. Though covenant, God supplied them with bread, which they changed the name to manna, that was rain, that rained down from heaven. The new covenant, God su uh, supplied Jesus Christ, who came down from heaven, the bread of life. It's the, the both of them calls him coming down from heaven. Exodus sixteen. And all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of sin. They all were in that wilderness. All murmured and complained. I'm telling you this again, it's critical. Murmuring and complaining, God looks at. If, if, he, you know, if you know him. And they would complain against Moses and Aaron. God told Moses he would rain down from heaven bread. This is, it's over and over in there so that we'll get it. Because they didn't get it. They got manna, which was just bread. Picture the world when Christ Jesus came, the Lord of glory, he came into, he, right now, he's coming to the wilderness of sin. When he comes into a heart, it's a wilderness of sin. And light comes in, and life comes in, and that wilderness gradually goes, it's immediate, and then it's just, progression for then on and this it says that in exodus 16 31 the manna was was white that's 16 14 which means when he takes our sins away we eat him we're white the bread of life is white it's clean it's holy second corinthians says the spotless son of god he knew no sin first peter he was a lamb with a spot of blemish 
He knew no defilement. On the cross, he had never been defiled. He was a perfect bread of life. He became sin who knew no sin for me and for you. And that round bread represents the world. That bread that, bread that came down from heaven with Moses, it specifically says it was brown, it was white. And that represents the world. Jesus came for the, Christ came for the whole world. And all these foreign countries, we're all in it together. Thank you, Lord. And so it was the shape of the world. All, everything in there fits together. Everything flows, flows right on over to the new covenant where we are, and it all fits together. It was a free gift. The bread, the manna, they call manna, was free in the wilderness of sin. And, and, it's, and that's where we meet him. And it's free. It's free to us. It's free. You never can pay for it. All he wants is your life. It was a free gift both times from, the, from heaven. Second Corinthians, the Lord Jesus, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. So he, in the old covenant, talks about sin, leprosy being sin. And this is just, I want, I want to go over this because it just it kind of explains. It's, it, all of it's so interesting. And it all points to Jesus. Every bit of it, but it's just so interesting. And I, when I figured all this out and learned all this, it just was so interesting to me. Uh, in the old covenant, when you had leprosy, which was a plague, and it was, and it was sin, they, had to, they couldn't go in the, into the, uh, the gathering of the people that were uh, God's people. They had to be kept outside, outside the camp, outside until they were cleansed and they were cleansed with the blood and then they could come back in but i won't tell you how they did it it's just amazing it's the power of the cross for each one of us is what i'm going to tell you at that time the blood of jesus christ had not been shed but the blood of perfect animals innocent animals were were that's where the blood came from that they used in the old covenant the high priest used it Sprinkling it on everybody and everything, all the things in the tabernacle. Leviticus 4, 8, 14, 8. And this, it's, it's about the leper. How to cleanse the leper so it could come back in, so it could be in fellowship with the Hebrews, with the Jewish people. It's the same thing for us today to be in fellowship with Jesus Christ. They would take, they were placed outside away from everybody. Because, you know, it was contagious. Well, sin is contagious. You can be drawn in before you know it. If you don't stay close to the Lord. And don't, so if you, you need to associate with the right kind of people too. They can have great influence on you. And your life is too valuable to let anybody mess you up. Because in the end, you will be answering to the Lord yourself, not that person. Leopards were placed outside the camp. And then they would get the blood of the sacrificial lamb. And they were applied on the right ear, the right uh, thumb, and the right big toe. This is it, it, amazing. So now it's covering, you know, here all the way down. And then it, he tells them to get a lock of oil, which is the anointing oil. It represents the Holy Spirit for us. And it did, did, because the high priest said that, you know, they knew about the Spirit. Now he says, anoint where the blood is. Then cover it with the anointing oil. So that's why I always say, apply the blood and, and cover it with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because the blood, if you, uh, if you plead the blood, the anointing will come. The, the anointing speaks to, it will come where the blood's been applied. Honors the blood. The anointing, the Holy Spirit honors where the blood of Jesus Christ is being, being applied. So, so the right ear is a, has the blood on it. Now they're putting the anointing oil on it. Now you can hear for us, for us, when, I, when our ears are anointed by the Spirit of God, because you've got the blood covering if you're born again. You're in the blood covenant. But you need the anointing of the Spirit. Now you can hear the voice of the Lord because your ears have been anointed with the blood for cleansing and the anointing oil that brings the power and the gifts of all. 
you can hear it and you don't hear the enemy's voice and then your thumb he anoints our work that means he's anoint that that symbolic of your work your hands and he anoints it with the blood and with the oil and then our work is blessed and guided by the spirit of god and then you he know they know the big toe big right toe this is all on the right side and they've got the blood on it now they're putting the anointing on on, on it we can walk in the spirit when you with when the blood and the anointing covers us like that we can walk in the spirit it cleans up our walk our, our walk as we walk on earth and i remember the new testament the Old Testament, before they go in, into the tabernacle, they had to wash their hands and the feet. In the New Testament, Jesus only told them to wash the feet because he, he's cleansed us. And you can have as much of them as you want to, but our, our walk touches the sins of the earth, our walk. And that's in the New Testament, it was just wash your feet. So we ask God tonight to cleanse us with the blood from the top of our head to the under the soul and then anoint everything in us inside and out in jesus name so it was jesus that washed the feet remember he washed the feet and i wrote down here and started because the lord said to me help me make the most of my life for the lord and so my the outcome is what he planned for me to to do help me to make my life let me read it. Most, the most I can for the Lord so that the outcome is what he wanted. I pray that for every one of us. And I actually find, find it into us that the Holy Spirit's doing that work. And see, it's already, I know it's already 25 to 10. The man that came down from heaven, man didn't make it. Man did not make it. It came from heaven. It wasn't not manufactured in Egypt. It was in the wilderness and it came from heaven. Only only God caused that manna to come down. In the same way, same way with us in Jesus. The Lord sent Jesus down here for us. That manna, that manna, which was the bread representing the spotless Son of God, it was white, which he cleanses us. It was round. He came for the whole world. If you eat him, it brings death to self in your wilderness of sin. If you eat of him, once you have him, start in the word, eating him. It brings death to you in your, in your wilderness and brings life there. Death starts with, death starts going away when you long for God and fellowship with Jesus Christ. It'll start disappearing. You come to a place, and this is so true, and I think y'all heard me say this. And if I haven't, I've said to myself that you can admit your that you can admit to God and to your own self. My goodness doesn't it doesn't bring anything. Being straight, being positive, won't get me there. It's when you when you can die to all of yourself and know every anything that's going to happen is because you have given up, so the Lord can do it. As long as we think we can do it or that we're the goodness and that we're walking straight and we're in the right position and we're doing this and we're doing that. He doesn't deal with flesh. He waits till you just surrender it all and just give up. So I tell you, if anything happens, he's doing it. I'm just here trying to be the vessel he's called me to be. And I believe he is doing it. I know we got we had testimonies come in this week of healings and things. And there were breakthroughs that the Lord told me some of you have had breakthroughs you haven't put put it together yet anything that you've been worried about uh, concerned about uh, needed changes the Lord's going to wake y'all a lot of you tonight and you're going to realize some things that happened this past week that you just took for granted and didn't realize God answered that from last week Luke 9 23 any man that comes after me let him deny himself and follow me that's what he's saying if you really want to be used of him and I listen I'm preaching to my to me Two, we've got to die, deny ourselves and follow him. Romans 6, 12. Consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God. Self-will is the mother of sin. Self-will is the mother of sin. 
I wrote that down. I don't know if I heard it somewhere or not, but I wrote it down. And this is so good. Uh, I've, I've taught this, oh, and you may not even remember it, but it's from Psalms uh, 118. It talks about binding the sacrifice with cords even until the horns of the altar. Well, in the in the old covenant, if you if the enemy if if the soldiers or the enemy, whoever it was, the kings or the, whoever was coming after you, you would run to the to the where the altar of the Lord was, and you'd hold on to the horn, and there was four around that altar. You and as long as you were holding on to the altar, the enemy could not touch you. Today is the same thing for us. You bind yourself into Jesus Christ. And you hold on to him. The one that died on the cross. And, and you lay your life down. That enemy is not going to destroy you. I just read from Psalms 18. Everything he wants to deliver us from. And everything he's given us if we're born again. And, and following him. Living for him. And I went on to say bind yourself. As a sacrifice to the cross of Jesus Christ. That's what is symbolic for us. Binding our self-life to the cross. It's hard, but you have to make decisions. Zechariah says, I see a fountain filled with blood. We need to go to that fountain daily and thank God for his precious, sinless, priceless blood that was sinless. That he shed because he came to save the world. It was a free, man, it was free gift. And Jesus Christ, you can't purchase it. You can't work for it. You can't buy it. It is free. Just take it. And then, but, but then because you fall in love with him, you want to learn how to have more, please him more. That love overrides everything. You're willing to do this and do that because of the love of him indwelling. You can feel him inside of you. Oh my goodness. It's so good. Feeding on the lamb must be the number one thing in your heart. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10.3, I'm going to say this again so you understand. What I'm telling you about over in Exodus and Numbers is, is the same thing that we have, except we were under grace and they weren't. All ate the same spiritual food. He called it, that's why they call it the bread. All drank the same spiritual, oh, all uh, spiritual water. And all, oh, and all drank the same spiritual drink. That's what it says. And they were drinking from us from the spirit which followed them and and the rock was Christ Jesus. And that rock was Christ, right with them in the wilderness of sin. He is, it was out of all of that wilderness thing that they started the Passover where they ate the leavened bread. Excuse me, they ate the unleavened bread, which meant it was free from sin. Okay, the manna was sent to the Israelites because God told Moses, I will rain down on the people and they should gather it every day. I'm going on to something else now. This manna came down, the bread from heaven came down every day, every night during the night, but they had to gather it before morning. And they had to gather it every day. It was given to them in the wilderness. And this is, listen, we're in a wilderness of working our way with the Lord. It's, and, it, and they were in the wilderness. So what they did, they on Saturday, they had to collect for two days. Now they had to collect it according to however many were in the family and how much they wanted to eat. Yeah, every, every, every person was different. This is really interesting. It was sent to them because they were foodless and they were hungry. And the manna would be rained down. The dew fell first during the night and then the manna. They had to collect it for daybreak. They could only collect it for one day if they collect, and they had to eat it or it would become wormy and stink, it says. But on Saturday, when they collected for two days, on the next day, Sabbath day, because they weren't allowed, it was a holy day, 
to do anything, it didn't stink and it wasn't warming. And God told them to collect it according to their own appetite, some more and some less, it says. And it was the bread of life that God was giving them. And he was trying to take them to, to the Canaan land. See, they were on the way to the Canaan land. and But there was a lot that went on before they got there. And he was trying to get them to the mountain of God also in all of this. He, he will meet your needs. Now, in Exodus 14, he said, No stranger could eat. That, uh, a servant could eat if he was circumcised. They could not eat it all unless they were circumcised. But if they were circumcised, a servant could eat. But all the mixed multitude, they could not eat this. That's Exodus 14. And the main thing, it fell all around them, it said. The same, this this manner, this white stuff fell from heaven. It was called bread. And it fell all around them. All the, And then there were a lot of them. Because when this happened, they were near starvation. So God sent it right at the right time. Don't forget that. Your manna is the word of God. It's the bread of life. And it fell around each door. This is so good. God comes to every person. They had to do something. They had to do something with it. You have to do something with this word. They either gathered it or tried, because it was, or tried it underfoot. I'm asking you tonight, what are you doing with the living word of God, the bread, the living bread of God? What are you doing? Are you trying? It, it, came, it came where they were. They had to gather it. That means you've got to gather it. Can't, I can't. You've got to gather it. It's got to speak to you. It, the word is now you even in your mouth. The word, but you've got to get it in there. It's alive. <clears throat> I'm gonna take a swallow because my throat. Y'all just agree with me. My throat doesn't get messed up. John says, one one, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, and our ears and our eyes have seen, and looked upon, and our hands have handled the very word of the of God. Because Jesus had come, and that was the sign because they handled him. After he was raised from the dead, they they touched his side and saw his scars. And it said each one in each individual had to gather it. This is a, it's a this is the Lord talking to every one of us. The words uh, and they were they got it according to his own eating. Oh my goodness. So each person has to gather Christ into their own self. And, the, and you've got to gather it. It's right at your door right now. Because this is going all over the world. And who knows? And then the YouTube, who knows? So, and now, this was all Exodus. Numbers 19, talk, 9 and 11 all talks about uh, the, all of this too. It said, the dew fell at night in the camp of, 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 uh, of where Moses was. And it fell, the dew fell first, and then that fell. And then they had to gather it by morning. And they had to, and then they ate it. They could not, and if anybody tried to gather it after that, during the day, it was already stinking and had worms. It, it can't be left, you can't leave it for somebody. It's for you. It's for you can share it with them, but they have to pick it up and take it. And it's not alive. I mean, they got they got to get it. Uh, it see, it's stinking and, and smell and have warming. That means the word of God is nothing unless you use it. You just stay in your own condition instead of taking this gift from heaven, this word that changes your life. It was a daily need. They, it says that was in verse in verse four. It it was fresh. And that's just that we have to go, go to uh, the Word every day and learn of Christ every day. It nourished them. And and so we're going to keep going here. I'm holding my drink just in case. It says you must eat all of Him. And you must receive all of Him. You don't want just part of it. What, and, and that manna and quail at night 
took care of them for 40 years. It was, it was their, that's what they ate and that's what they lived on. The manna from heaven will take you to, it, they ate it till they were, to got to Canaan land, to the borders of Canaan land. We, we're supposed to eat this. Our Canaan land, of course, it will be when we get that. I found Canaan, Canaan land's heaven. So you eat it every day until, until you're out of here and then you'll be with the bread of life. And it says you must eat all of him. I mean, eat all of it is what it was saying to them. It said, I, this goes on a little bit further in, do, in Exodus with Moses. It, it, then they go on to making the sanctuary. And God said, now let them make us a sanctuary to dwell in, not made with hands. It is a dwelling place of God Almighty. Okay. You are the sanctuary. You are his dwelling place. And you were not made with hands. All, all of this is talking about you and your relationship with everything over there points to Jesus Christ, the believer in Jesus Christ. It was in a shadow then. It's substance and reality to us. Every bit of it. And it all is Jesus from, from Genesis to Revelation. Preparing the way ahead of, that he's coming. And there were a lot of colors in that tabernacle, and every one of them represented Jesus Christ. White was white was the holiness of Jesus. Well, I wrote that Matthew it shows him as the King of Kings, and he, and it was purple royalty. So everything in the tabernacle represented Jesus. The colors, every, those colors like blue, the scarlet was his suffering, the suffering Savior. John was uh, it represents the blue color, the Son of God, the beloved. John loved Jesus. He was one that was laid on his breast. Uh, it, so the blue is heavenly anointing, and the white, of course, is a pure holy, holy God. And the purple, the King of Kings, it and, and purple it means royalty, and uh, well, just those colors are so. So everything in there is about every piece of the furniture. Everything is Jesus. From the time you go through the gate and the two, there were two more sections. It was called the way. The next uh, curtain you went through was called truth. And the last one we went through where, the, where all the supernatural was, was life. And that's what we're trying to get, where there's life. So there's a progression in your walk. With Jesus, that's why you have to take it every day, and let Him change you. And 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 the more you take of Him, the less it is of you. Because the love, that love, it's 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 your heart always wants to be like He wants it to be. And then as you read the Word, it changes your soul. That's who you work with, that mind and your soul. The more you look and meditate on the Word, the more you become like Him. That lamb offered up for the leopards cleansing. Jesus Christ was offered up. Both of them was, was sinless. Both of them were, were flawless. And Jesus Christ was lifted up for us. I got to hurry. It says the appetite. This was in verse 10. The appetite determined the amount they gathered. So how much do you, how much, how hungry are you for Jesus? It tells them together according to the number of, in their house. And for the children. And, uh, it was free. And then, and you you gathered according to your desire. So I'm asking you tonight, how, how much do you desire to know him? How much do you desire to be more like Jesus? How much do you desire to be walking in the spirit and the fulfilling why he created you? Everybody has a different thing created and everything is important. When we all get it straight, then we'll flow together, right? Jesus said, if any man eateth my flesh, which is what they were doing with the bread, and drinketh my blood, he abides in me and I in him. 
Greek mean abide abideth in uh, means in Greek it means koinonia, and that's communion. You'll have it. You'll have it's, it's where you know him as daddy father. It's a daddy fellowship, and all of us. I mean, I I need that more than it. And we have thousands and thousands of children that are fatherless, and a lot of them are fathers and fathers and home, but they're still fatherless. Gee, father, listen. He wants to be that daddy fellowship with you. And he really will be. He's closer. Uh, you just go to him and he works it out with you. With your heart, go to him and tell him what you need or what you're concerned about or you need wisdom and understanding. He will guide you. He's a father. He really is and he's alive. It's the presence of God being rubbed on you with substance of his nature. That's what that word Greek means in uh, abideth in, in Greek. Kononia. It's the presence of God being rubbed on you with substance of his nature. And that's what changes you. And then they went to a place where they didn't have water and, they, and it was called Myra's name Myra, which meant sorrow. And God took care of them there too. But there was a lot of people got, you know, murmuring in the place. It's where Jesus, was, where, where Raphael came, where he turned the bitter waters to sweet waters. And listen, in the wilderness, when you're in those bitter places, you need to drink of the water of salvation. You need to drink of the, out of your belly flows rivers of living water. You need to know, go to, to, go to the God that turns your bitter waters into sweet. He's waiting there and he will work with you and he will get you there. You just have to keep going, praying and hanging on, cling to the cross. Now, the matter was not liked by those that were not the Jew, you know, the Hebrews. There was a whole mixture there. So there's going to always be people around you that don't want to be a part of it and don't even like what you're talking about. And I'm sure there's someone here tonight. Who knows? But God, I'm, I love to talk about it because it's real. He's real. He's real. He is as real as that more real than the matter that the bread of life, the bread that fell on that dew. He's that's what he wants to be to us. And those people will never see the beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those that fight the things of the Lord, fight a murmuring, complaining, and around, and don't want to hear what you have to say and call you crazy or whatever. And Jesus said you'll be despised. And and they had people in that group that, that despised the, the, all of it, but God kept right on moving with them and they just kept going on. That's the, there's always going to be a mixture in multitudes. There'll be a mixture. It says they felt lusting is what it said about the multi, about this group. And and a lot of, the, I guess they let Israelites and then God was angry with them. A lot of them died because of it. Because he got, you know, he was just tired of having to deal with them and not believing or not knowing he was he was taking care of them, that he had never forsaken them. The manna, now I'm just going to re, refresh the things. The manna fell upon uh, the dew. Uh, it speaks of fallen humanity, corruption, that sins worked into our lives. It goes back to Adam uh, and that came from, he said he came from dust and dirt and he's going back there. Jesus never went back there. Never did because he was born. He was a baby sent he was god himself came down here and he died on the cross he was buried and he was raised again he never went back to dust the dirt like uh, like we you know all of us because he's a holy it, uh, the bible says this holy thing that shall be born it shall and shall be called the son of god that's luke 135 the word became flesh and dwelt among us uh, the manna was white. I'm just going to re just refresh here some things. Second Corinthians 15, spotless purity, son of God. That's who it was resembling. He knew no sin. First Peter, he was a lamb without spot or blemish. He had no defilement when he went to the cross. He had no sin. He was clean. Exodus 16, 4, God said, I will, I will rain bread from heaven. That's Exodus 16, 4. He didn't say manna. He said bread. Exodus 16, 31. The, uh, 
the house of Israel called it manna. That's where they changed, named it. 1635, all ate until the borders of Canaan. And we got to eat it every day till we go to the last day here. That's what that sin does. And they couldn't leave it till morning. They had to eat it daily. They had to. Even when the day they couldn't eat the holy day where they didn't do anything, they still had to have the manna. Manna was given in the wilderness and it came down from heaven. And we, I'm every one of us have been, in, and some of us in the wilderness, you know, through in different times in life. But the Lord starts coming in with that bread life and changes. It wasn't a product of the earth. No man could have made it. It was rained down bread from heaven. It was a gift from God, a token of the free gift of love that he was also going to give us, the bread of life. It was sent to a needy, uh, foodless people like us. If you don't know the Lord, you're foodless of the things of the, you're foodless of spiritual things. And you, and we, and really desperate. We're all desperate. Even when we know him, we want more of him. It was complete provision. That word of God, the bread of life is complete provision for his, for the people. And God was determined to bring them to Mount Sinai and into the Canaan land. Like he is determined. He is determined to bring us into to heaven, to complete our course. He is determined. And you don't know what all he's doing for us to get us there. And they ate this for 40 years, quail at night and manna in the morning. And they had a fresh, we get a, you've got to have a fresh supply every day. You've got to feed on Christ daily. It was white in color. That's Exodus 16. Sweet to taste. <clears throat> That's verse 31 and 16. His, uh, his songs of Solomon called it the sweet, uh, talking about the, uh, the Lord said he was sweet to my taste. Numbers 11, it was ground. This, this, the fell, the man of the fell, the bread. It was ground. It was beaten by mortar. It was baked. And that's what happened to Jesus. He came down from heaven to earth. He was ground by the mortar of man. He was beaten for our iniquities. So we didn't have to stay in the wilderness. And so we had promise of where we were going. Manna was preserved on the Sabbath, which is 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 for us. It was preserved. It means it's alive on the. It's just alive, whether you gather it or not. It's it's there. It's already been gathered. You you all you do is eat it on the day of rest. It was given at night. When Jesus comes into your heart and you're in, it's night to you. You're everything in you. You have you have no, you can you cannot even explain the what happens when he comes in. It, it, it's night, and then all of a sudden there's life and light that wakes you up to reality. He comes to you during your darkness, and he starts lighting you your life up. That's what he did with that manna, and again it was sweet to taste. It was like wafers with honey. And his his uh, cheeks are like like spices, which were all sweet and smell good. Psalms 119 says, Your words are sweeter than honey to my mouth. Psalms 81 16, with honey from the rock I would have sat satisfied. I would satisfy you. With honey, that's Jesus. With honey from this is old covenant, say that in Psalm. With honey from the rock, I will, sat have, I will satisfy you. Psalm 19.10. The judgments of the Lord are sweeter than the... Uh, something that bought you. That, uh, Beth just walked in here. <laughs> I saw somebody moving. I wasn't sure who it was. The judgments of the Lord are sweeter than, than honey and the honeycomb. That's really good. 
Taste and see that the Lord is good. And then songs of song. His mouth is, is most sweet. Yes, he is altogether lovely. And then um, the then Moses. Moses and this is then over numbers. It tells the same thing again. They took that people gathered it from the in the morning by morning, and they had to they beat it. They made they baked it. They made cakes of it. It was beaten by mortar, and that's speaking of the suffering of Jesus Christ. He they ground it. He wept, and it talks about Jesus weeping over over Jerusalem. All these tell of the, of the beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ and the price he paid so we could have the living bread. This is this is by the gospel being hidden from you, Second Corinthians. If the gospel is hidden, it is hidden from those that are perishing. So get in the word. You're perishing if you haven't grabbed a hold of this and this second Corinthians 4 3 for the Lord of the world has blinded them their minds because you you you've got to go after him you've got to want him and if you don't believe you can't see the light you're in darkness the gospel is the glory of Christ in the image of God that's who, what the gospel is he's the creator of all things and uh, he created all things and, for, and by him all things are made he is before all things. He's head of the body of Christ. He made a peace through his blood for us. In him dwells all wisdom and knowledge. After the cross, Jesus said, all, all power was given unto me in heaven and earth. And I thought I had, I've got one, a few, just one or two more things to say. Revelation says, the manna was hidden. And because it was, it wasn't, it was the, he was the bread of life. But it's going to be revealed to all, everybody that overcome it. We will understand it. <clears throat> this is in Revelation, I believe, 2.17. And actually, we are feeding on that which will be our food in eternity. That's what that's saying. Only as we feed on Christ himself, that that. And that is a written word. Don't, when you wonder who Christ is, it's a written word. I tell, I say this because I didn't understand that. That he is a written word. You can find him there. John 6, 32. Jesus, uh, this is Moses. Jesus said, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. Moses didn't give you. He gave. But my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who cometh down from heaven. And give his life to the world. And that's where it's talking about that world again. The the manna fell in, fell in the wilderness of sin. Which is a hopeless place if you're there tonight. Come on. We want you to join us and come on and be part of this wonderful family God's putting together. It was said when they looked towards the wilderness. They, 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 they beheld the glory of the Lord. When they looked towards the wilderness. They beheld... When you look towards the wilderness, your wilderness, God wants you to behold him there, for his glory. It was His glory was truly revealed when, when, uh, when Jesus Christ came. He revealed eternal words became, eternally, the eternal word became flesh in, in tabernacle, tabernacle, demanda. You are his tabernacle now. Behold the glory of the glory of the only begotten, the glory of the Lord, be seen. So we, and it says face to face with Jesus Christ. That's Second Corinthians 4, 6. I'm going to end where Moses fed them for 40 years until they got to Canaan, the entrance of Canaan land. And that's a type of Christ. This is my body broken for you. Eat ye all of it. Eat ye all of it. That's the, all the word, eat it. It's from Genesis all the way through, it's Jesus. If you sin in the wilderness, he's still there to, to be your life bread. He's there. All you have to do is welcome him. And the, uh, the last thing I was going to tell you, because this is the Ark of the Covenant, which we will see again someday. Uh, the Lord commanded Aaron, who was high priest, I don't know if he was at that time or not because that went on, you know, they did that. To take a jar and take an Omar of that 
man or bread. I, it's bread is what it says, but I wrote man of it because that's what the Israelites called it. And to fill it up and to take it and fill it up before the, in the, up to the face of the Lord. And that jar is in, uh, in the Ark of the Covenant where the Ten Commandments are, that jar of Omar of, of that bread is in there. In the Ten Commandments, and Aaron's rod that budded, which means salvation overnight you're saved. That tabernacle, uh, in the tabernacle was the bread again. It represented the 12 tribes. It represented all of God's people. It was called the show bread or show, S-H-O-W bread. In Psalms 98, it's called the bread. Manna was called the bread, not manna. Uh, let's see. I think that's all. He gave them bread out of heaven, Jesus. That he gave, he came down out of heaven, and gave life to the world. So I, I pray that's the end of probably the end of that for me. I still need to do the tabernacle with y'all, but it's so in depth. I don't even know it's it's everything where it talks about the nail where the goat's hair was the rope. Well, goats hair, goats represent sin, and it was tied from top down. And it was a stave to hold the uh, tent in place, the tabernacle in place. It was a tent. And uh, uh, if they would take a hammer and the nail was brass, which represents suffering. And they would hammer it halfway in the ground and halfway out, representing Jesus Christ dying and suffering for the sins of the world. He, he was alive and then buried and then he rose again. And every piece in there represents Jesus. Everything in there represents Jesus. And someday I'll get into that. It's it's really it's really a lot in there, and it'd be hard to cover. My Beth just walked in. It's time for us to pray. So we're going to pray, and what we're breaking is jinx first, and um, jinx and sabotage. So, and I'm going. I'll be blowing because the Lord. I put my little note over here. Don't forget to blow. Because too many people have said things are happening when I blow. So, And I know the Lord told me to do that. So I don't want to forget that. I, and I pray some of you I know have had to go off because it's late. Not too late. We'll be through by 1030. Um, so in the name of Jesus, Beth right here is going to agree with us. We bind in the name of Jesus. We lift everybody up to the Lord. And anybody in your family or any loved ones, anybody that has been harassed or been uh, really crippled by the demonic kingdom of jinx and sabotage, we're now binding that demonic, the principality over it, the strong man, we're binding every one of them over every life that this is, that is engaged in any life. And I do that over any of my loved ones in the name of Jesus. We bind you, devil. We bind the strong man. We bind the networking of demons working with you. We bind every way you have sabotaged God's people and jinxed them so they, they can't ever get what their final destination is in any area. And you have robbed and stolen for the last time. And we're all in agreement. And tonight you are bound. Your plans, your curses, your assignments are now destroyed, severed. We repent for any iniquities in our lives and our bloodline all the way back to Adam and Eve. There's no iniquity. We repent. We ask for forgiveness. We ask God to forgive the people that could have opened these doors right now. So we, we break the curse. We destroy the curse. We pull it out of your bloodline, out of your life, and we reverse the curse right now. And we release all the promises of Calvary, the blood covenant promises and all of Abraham's blessings to start flowing through your bloodline. We command sabotage to go, and we command jinx to go. You are coming up. You are bound. Your powers are broken. We submit both of you to the Lord Jesus Christ in every life that's suffering from this. And tonight, you are bound back to your master permanently right now, and the strong man over you, and all the networking are all bound back to the pits, to your master permanently. And you can never, you are bound there and we give you, we close the door, we seal it with the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus, and we turn you back over to the Lord Jesus Christ to deal with. Everybody that's getting delivered from these things right now, or your loved ones, or whoever you're praying for, 
we dedicate everything back to the Lord Jesus Christ that these devils had lordship over. They cannot ever entangle you ever again in the name of Jesus. For it is written, where two or more of us agree is touching anything, it is done by our Father in heaven. And it's to bring glory back to, to glorify Jesus Christ. So we dedicate that part of your life totally back to the Lord Jesus Christ. We wash it in the blood, every part of it. We cleanse it with the blood so there's nothing there. We dedicate it back to the Lord. Now we release the blessings of the Lord into that area totally. The blessings, and we bind them in there permanently. We close every door so none of these devils can ever come back. They are bound permanently forever, and no other devils can come. We dedicate it all back to the Lord Jesus Christ, and we ask God Almighty to right now start changing the atmosphere in your life. Right now, right now I'm commanding these things to come out of you and go straight to the pits in the name of Jesus, or come off of you. However they're controlling, they are bound. They can have no more control over any life that has this that agrees with us because there's hundreds of us that will be agreeing right tonight that every one of these devils are leaving you. And we command the, the, the everything to come back to you that they've robbed and taken and stolen from you because you've cleansed with the blood. They're illegal. They have no place. And Lord, we thank you for the miraculous going right now through the airways across the world, around the world, around the world, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, be gone. Be gone in Jesus' name, permanently. Back to your master, in Jesus' name. Now, I've got a lot of people here agreeing. Y'all, you uh, now we're going to start. The Lord's going to call out stuff to be delivered. There's going to be more deliverance tonight than healings, probably. Uh, he's really, when I was praying with Shelby, it was really over and over, very strong about the deliverance ministry being uh, going around the world. And of, of course, healing and then it's salvation. It's all three. But tonight, I know we're, we're dealing with, uh, and people are agreeing with us as we declare this and decree it. It is in the airways permanently until Jesus Christ comes. In the mighty name of Jesus, every generational curse is broken too. So um, a lesbian spirit is leaving someone right now. When I call these out, y'all agree that they're coming out because it could be a lot of around the world. I don't know how many people are listening that they can never come back. At the end, we'll close all the doors. Uh, jealousy is leaving someone or maybe more than one. Um, a leech, uh, like a leech spirit, like you leech on to people or somebody's leeching on to you. The Lord's severing that right now in Jesus' name. And bam, these are all bound back to their master. Everything working with these spirits. Um, disassociate. Dis disassociation. Someone's got a mental where you're disassociating. And it's probably under a trauma or something. God's delivering you and healing you right now in Jesus' name. Lack of confidence is leaving someone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's going to replace it. You, 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 you get to start reading the word. You're going to be surprised how your life's changing. Thank you, Lord. Um, condemnations leaving several people where you've been felt condemned. It's leaving you now in Jesus' name. Jesus forgives. There, you, all you have to do is repent. He, and, it, and then the devil, you have, don't ever let. There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. You quote that. To, don't ever forget what I just told you because the devil will mess you up with that. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And if you've repented, there's not. He has. No, he has no legal right. Don't don't let him get you. It's your mind. He'll try to mess your mind up. In Jesus' name. So condemnation's leaving. Feeling disqualified. And that's a lie from the devil. Jaundice is leaving someone. Jaundice, like yellow. It's, it's, someone's being healed. Um... Someone feels like they're not in reality. So the Lord's going to like snap your mind open or something. And and you are going to, that's just a, that's just, I don't know what it is, but the Lord's bringing you back to reality in Jesus. And it may be just in a situation that you need to be in reality. Well, I don't know, but the Lord knows what he's doing. So thank you, Jesus. Abandonment's leaving people. 
Fear, fear is leaving people. A troubled spirit, the a troubled spirit, or whatever it is, God's dealing with that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Beth. Um, a lazy eyes being healed. A, a lazy foot's being healed. It must be somebody's foot that doesn't want to work quite right. It's being healed. this abandonment's really big so some whoever that is or several people we ask the lord to hold wrap his arms around you and that you and that you you come out of that abandonment right now and come back and be stable in jesus name in the mighty name of jesus infirmity spirit of infirmity is leaving probably several people in jesus name Failure to thrive, failure to thrive. That could be an infant or it could be. I've known some adults that that's happened to. Failure to thrive. We bind that death spirit off you in Jesus' name right now. and Send it back to the pits. And we command you to thrive and be everything God created you to be. Fault finding. That's a spirit. And we at repent. Whoever has that, repent. Now, God, if I have been a fault finder, forgive me and Cleanse me too, in Jesus' name. That that destroys churches, fellowship, groups, families. We just thank you, Lord. Interfere on, interfere on. Some bad interfere on. Let, the Lord's taking care of that. What a, I, I, I can't exactly remember exactly what that is, but the Lord's taking care of that. I, I just saw uh, a man, and I, I think I heard husband slap a woman, just slapped her face. And I, the Lord is going to get a hold of him. And he may need some help, may need some counsel. He may have some anger issues that he can't, he can't understand why he's angry at you, and it's not even you. It could be issues way back, and he's taking it out on you. He may need some help, but don't stay in a, don't allow abuse. In Jesus name get 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 him some help you know you can call call the even you can call an emergency room and ask where you need to go to get help they can give you all kind of advice or your local uh, mental health you know there's all just look get on your phone and look it up but get some advice and then get help or maybe the Lord just healed him. I don't know, but don't stay in it. Don't. I'm not saying divorce, but I'm saying don't stay where you're abused. Just you know, get help and get it straight, so you don't let. Because that person's unhappy too. Some injustices towards. Uh, this is many people. I bet I see 25. I don't see who they are, but I see popping up. Of where injustice is being done so we can take authority over that 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 kingdom where there's been a lot of injustices and we ask God to reverse every bit of it for every person listening now in Jesus name that that is changed now in the mighty that kingdom is bound permanently to the pits in the name of Jesus and there be no more injustices in your life it's like it's abnormal it's not just you know things happen but this is like abnormal and i saw i, I bet 25 people involved in this and not together they're all over the world i'm not sure where they are but but you're getting delivered in the name of jesus jesus christ came to set the captives free it is written jesus christ came to set you free it is written he has given us power over all the power of satan and nothing can by any means hurt us it is written, what are we bind on earth is bound in heaven, and we're binding all these things on back to their own back to the master, and we're loosening to you all the things of the Lord in Jesus' name. Discrimination is being uh, is being delivered right now and being healed where you've been discriminated against. And and one person is it's not right, it's not, it's not true. And God's going to reveal it. 
That's what he said, tell you, he's going to reveal it. Then other people have been discriminating against for no reason. And God's going to start justifying and getting that straight. It's going to be through you praying and us agreeing with you. And we're binding that off out so you can just move freely in your life. In Jesus' name. A cr somebody has a crushed spirit. Maybe several. The Lord's intervening. He, said he, uh, he promises to heal the brokenhearted. And bind up their wounds. So in Jesus name. We thank the Lord that he's binding up your broken heart. And he's giving you grace. And everything you need to be totally healed. In Jesus name. Totally healed. In Jesus name. From that. In Jesus name. A flamboyant. Someone's flamboyant. The Lord's healing that he's I, I don't know how bad it might be really bad to call it out that it is it's become a spiritual thing God's breaking it off breaking it off and you're going to even feel differently and, and it's bound straight back to the pits where it came from in Jesus name someone's liver is being healed Scoliosis is being healed. Somebody's back's being straightened. Thank you, Lord. Cataracts are being healed. Cataracts. Cushion's disease is being healed. Whoa, I, I heard something. I didn't quite hear it. I, Lord, what was that? I missed it. I didn't get it all. Oh my goodness. It's something to do with the blood. The Lord's healing somebody's a blood disorder. And a kidney, like a kidney shutting down, the Lord's healing a kidney. And you know, we bind up every spirit of cancer just because that's so prevalent. We bind in every devil of cancer or of cannibalism spirit so it cannot do any more damage and we bind it up and we release it out of you and back to the pits and command you to be healed, totally healed. Some of you have called in this week that with cancer, and a several in fact. I ask God I might do miraculous healing, deliver. This is deliverance to get cancer. We thank it. Then it heals the, the, the destruction of that devil in Jesus' name. Lord, send your healing fire power. Jesus, I can't do it. I'm asking you to do it. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to do a miraculous healing on people with cancer tonight. And with, with the cannibalism spirit or any other kind of spirit. I don't know what all they're called. But I know that's one of them. And I break it. We bind according to the word of God. Back to the, the master. And we loose them from it totally. And we bind into everybody that needs healing healing. We bind into you healing, miraculous healing power of God tonight. In Jesus' name, whatever you need healing from. Someone's hurting real bad right through here, and the Lord's healing that right through, um, right below your esophagus, right there in the middle of your chest in the front. I don't know if it's front or back, but it's in there. God's healing something. Did I call it fibromyalgia? I just heard that again. I don't know if I have. Fibromyalgia is being healed. Feigning spells are being healed. There's something in your body that's triggering something that's not good. So whatever it is, the Lord's healing it. It's not going to trigger it anymore in Jesus' name. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. I'm bringing up mitochondria again. That's something that's very powerful in your body. That look, the Lord's healing every one of us. Our mitochondria. It's it's a powerful thing in your cell, and it's it, you've got we've got to have healthy ones. So, can, so we thank God that He's performing miraculous miracles and healing the mitochondria in all of our lives, healing all of our blood work, our bone marrow, our blood. Thank you, God, for creating, doing creative miracles everywhere. And creating miracles everywhere, Lord. 
Stacy Addis is being healed. Someone's frantic. So we bind frantic. We whatever's causing it, honey, we break it. We break it. We break it. We come in frantic in the cause of it to come out of you. We ask the Lord to intervene right now. Intervene and give you peace. And like a permanent peace in Jesus' name. Someone, I just got the word satisfaction. So someone, the Lord is just engulfing them in satisfaction. You've been eating of him and you're going to satisfy. You're going to be so satisfied. It's something new he's doing in your life because he's watched you go after him. Thank you, Lord. I ask you to do that to everybody that listens to it. And all of my family, me, all of us, Lord. And I actually see fire. I don't know if it's hitting just one person or many people, or if it's just going around the world doing all kinds. I see fire. Uh, it's Holy Spirit fire. It's not. It's not bad. It's a good. Oh, and he said, revelation knowledge is coming to people. I don't know if there's a revelation knowledge is following the fire or if it's two separate things because it was very close there. Yes, Dina, honey. Yes, satisfaction in Jesus. That is for sure. Thank you, Lord, for that. For, for, for that. For the fire and for revelation knowledge. Lord, I thank you opening all of us up to true revelation knowledge. I ask you to keep us from the evil one to protect us, to heal us, deliver us, save, sanctify all of us, Lord, and fill us with you, Lord Jesus, the sweetness of your spirit, the, the uh, security of your spirit, the cleansing of your spirit, all of it, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the warned angels, holy angels, all kinds. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your protection and guard over us. Now, for all the different prayer requests that have come in this week, like protections from curses and witchcraft in church, and some churches have people, some people have sent things in for prayer for things like that. Um, uh, several people with cancer. Uh, some people going in for tests Monday uh, for uh, a, ch a baby that's uh, eight, I believe. I don't know if she's 18 months or, or what. She's in that age, has not said a word, and she's got, I mean, and they've had her tested and all. Agree with us that she starts talking, that everything connects. And we command it, whatever's going on to come out of her, and that everything connects so this child can start saying words in Jesus' name. She has, she's not said anything. So we thank the Lord for that. And she, she hears and all. They've had that all tested. It's something needs to be released. So we say it's released tonight in Jesus' name. And for those that are going in for tests this week, we pray that they're all healed, that the tests come back really good. Yes, Jennifer, I see that. I agree that. I, I agree it's going on everybody, everybody that's, that uh, is seeking the Lord and hungry for the Lord because uh, I don't think I've gotten that before, and especially not with Revelation knowledge right behind it. So, Lord, I give you tonight, I give you everything, I give you, I thank you that you are the true bread of life, that you are, your life came for the world. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for sending this around the world where it needs to go, where it can change a life, heal a life, sanctify a life, save a life, whatever, Lord. Use it, send it, open it up and get it wherever it needs to go in Jesus' name. Thank you for every person, every country. Every life that ever tunes in, God, that they get something that that causes them to go another step further towards you, or two steps, whatever, Lord, that it, it, everybody moves close to you in some way, and that their needs are being met, too, Lord. And financial struggles, I ask, Lord, to remove financial struggles. And for the several still looking for some place to live that they can afford, that's safe, and that they love. So I ask God to, to miraculously, miraculously open those places up. In Jesus' name. 
in Jesus' name. And of course, we pray for for uh, the war that's going on, and that God Almighty intervenes quickly in Jesus' name. And I and keep praying for them because we, you know, there's a lot there. Just pray for all the families and pray for the leaders and pray God does a miraculous miracle and, and gets that straight in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to go and I'm telling you I love you. Yes, no financial struggles. Anybody with fi we ask God to miraculously intervene in all in all areas to do with finances in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. To heal sore throats and ears and dizziness and um, all COVID, you know, COVID related uh, lingering like you know, I put my hand on my head and I'm commanding my brain to be healed in Jesus' name. It won't, it can't get any worse. It only, only can get better in Jesus' name. In fact, I had a lady that's had the same thing as over a year, and she says it's, she still has a little bit, but it's gradually gotten better. They're doing a lot of studies on it because a lot of people, it's affected a lot of people that way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Allison and uh, Stephen and, oh, I think I saw Dawn there, yes, and Marilyn Hesse. And oh yeah, oh yeah, she receives that for ears and distance. That's really right now it's worse than that. I've got more people call me even today, text me about dizziness and sinuses. This area, I it hi, will love you. Alopecia. Uh, yeah, we pray all alopecia. Well, look at here. You can see what's coming. That's another thing happening. All my hair is coming out in clumps. We pray all alopecia is being healed right now. Children, adults, everybody. And no more of my hair can fall out. I send it to the prayer team to pray for me. I, it's really amazing what's happening. I, it, and that is one of the things with COVID, and it's very serious. I mean, it won't kill you, but it's, it, it's, you know, it can change your life if you're bald. I don't want to have to wear a wig the rest of my life. So please, just pray it no more. You can see it's just... It was a little bit thin, but it, no, it's like half. I got at least half of it's falling out. I can tell by the when I pull it back. So thank you, Lord, for for this I've gotten that's going can only get better in Jesus' name. And if anybody else listening, I'm praying the same thing for you. We just thank the Lord for each other. I hug you, all of you. Oh, I'm gonna blow on you again. And ask the Lord to give you what in Jesus' name receive whatever's been called out. In Jesus' name, receive God's word tonight. In Jesus' name, receive it. I bind it into you, and we bind everything out. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, everything that was called out, we bind into everybody that needs it, everybody, including my family and me. We, we, we bind it into us to bring the results that the word says that, that, the word said, that you called out tonight. And we bind every demonic spirit, of any kind, the 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 strong man, the networks, the ones dealing with the, the individuals, we bind them all back to to the master. Every one of them now, they are rendered helpless and powerless from now till Jesus deals with them, and we seal them there in the name of Jesus until Jesus deals with them. That's where they're staying, and we close every door permanently. And for every person that's received any word tonight, we bind it into you. We seal it into you, and we ask God to, uh, rem the, he, where he removes it, that that's dedicated back to the Lord Jesus Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit is cleansed with the blood and filled with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, that there will be no, there can never be any retaliation to any of us at any time. We bind, there'll be, that devil is bound from harassing any of us, and we lose the blood of Jesus on all of us, saturate our homes, our lives, our cars, our work, our finances, our children, our grandchildren, their mates, everything about us until Jesus comes, saturated in the blood of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that every door is closed now where anybody has been set free permanently, sealed with the blood, and no demons can come back, none, ever, that everything is dedicated back to the Lord. And, and, and every door is closed. We thank you, Lord, for miraculous things tonight. We thank you, Jesus. You have to do it. No, no, we can't do it. We're just being, I'm being obedient. Now, thank you. We've agreed, and we thank you that it's going to bring great results. And we just praise you for souls coming into the kingdom in Jesus' name. 
I love you. Let me just call some names out here real quick. What time is it? Oh, no, it is a little bit later. But I did that Psalm 18 first. I'm going to the bottom. I'll come Marilyn, Hesse, Allison. I'm going to tell you, I love all of you. Deborah, Diane, Greg, Daddy Zian. My throat's wanting to do that. <coughs> God is in. I see that. I'll be praying. I'll get that and pray. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. I will get your things and pray for you. Deborah Huggins, Dave Shannon, hi, honey. Uh, Marilyn. I'm praying for all these. Regina, honey, we love you. We're praying for you, Justin. We. That, head into bed. Okay, Justin, we love you. You have a good day tomorrow on your new job. Thank God Justin got a new job. Laughed the last week. Don, honey, I love you and we're praying. And Allison and and Steve also, Allison and Deborah. Hugs. I know a lot of Will and all that group from Colorado and Dorothy. Let's cancel that. And um, Margaret, Jennifer Mims, Linda Jackson. I agree, Deborah. All hair loss come back, Linda. Parker. Uh, let's see. Most okay. Dina. Dina Payne Gorm. We love I love you, honey. I was I was, I'm praying for all the people that need homes to live. Regina. Yes, we agree you're healed too. Brian Ranga. We're praying whatever you need, you're getting it tonight. Oh, Brian, I, I, he's late because oh you lost the same. Oh my goodness. I, you know, Brian, I went to the University of Oklahoma, too. Jennifer means love my children, too. Uh, let's see. I received that for injustice for me and Olivia. Well, I agree with that. This injustice, that's a big one. Alina. Pate. Patsy Shannon. Dawn. Let's see. Jill. I love you, Jill. I, you know, I don't. I, we, I stay so busy. It's just really something. Trying to keep up. Uh oh. He said, "Priest, uh, pray." So Justin, he thought he had a job. So I guess it meant he had applied for it. He said, "Please pray for me to get this job. I'm going to get." We're saying yes. He's going to get it in Jesus' name because he needs a job. God bless everything. God bless you, Justin. Oh, now see, I, I'm, I've i lost everybody. I think I, oh, I don't know. Dying Greg, I can't believe what just happened. It went to some ad. Oh, my goodness. Linda Allen, we have several at Linda's on here, honey. Thank you for joining in with us. Newton Lee, thank you for joining in. I pray you'll come back. Rebecca Rutherford. Simona, Simona, we're praying, honey. And Dar Darnell. He was just taking University Hospital and his brain is swollen. Oh my goodness. He was in a car wreck. Okay, we pray miraculous miracle. We command the swelling and stop is his brain. No brain clots. Lord, keep him alive in Jesus' name and heal him. Abby, honey, I love you and all your children. Mary Burke. Um, I'm getting up up here where Joe Davis. Amy Hinkle, sweetheart. Rebecca Sherwood, yes. Got that. Logan, my sweet Logan. Uh, Linda, Abby, Dawn, Marilyn. Awesome. Dina. Dave. Christina. I'm, I'm so glad you're on with us, honey. And pray for your dad and you. and Praying for the people that need jobs, people that need homes. People need healing. People need money. Breakthroughs. We're thanking God for all kinds of breakthroughs and good things. Rita, I'm so glad, honey, you're with us. Rebecca, my sweet, my sweet Be Rebecca, she's been, they've been, my children have been like angels to us. The healing of Linda's throat. Yes, we pray it's healed in Jesus' name. Beth Ann, of course, was right here. Y'all saw her and Joe and Dina cancel 
I don't know if he wants to. I, is it Penny, honey, I'm glad you're with us. Christina, Christina, Christina. Christina, I'm glad, I'm so glad. Vicki, Mandy, my daughter. See, I've lost all the names again. I've lost them. They've all gone. They they went, they just went out. I don't know. Oh, they came back. Mandy, my daughter Mandy. I love her. They've been, and Jenny from England and now here. Jenny, honey, I, I hope to get with you pretty soon. Patsy, Danielle, I'm praying for you, Danielle, to be healed. Rachel, uh, there's a Rachel. Now, see, it's, I don't know if I'll ever get that back because it did. It's getting funny. My phone's getting funny right now. I want to go back. Where was that? I don't know where I went. I think it went way back. Jennifer Mims. I don't know if I... Brian. It went back to Brian Ranga. Oh, my goodness. Well, where, where in the world can I get back where we were? Jill. Justin. Diane Gregg, honey, thank you for being with us. Diane Arrett, thank you for being with us. Linda Allen. Simone again. Mary Ann, thank you, honey. Logan, Alice, and Diva. Dave Shepard, Kate, Lin Linda Jackson, Joe. I think we're, yeah, we're at the end because it's not, well, if I miss somebody, I got Rita, I got up in Beth, I think, I think Vicky, maybe I don't know if I saw Vicky before, Daniel, Lisa Hill, Ray, I'm so thankful all of y'all are with us, Phyllis, I'm glad, honey, it's the first time I've seen you, thank you for being I pray you're blessed and healed in Ruby and Sher Sherry Seymour. I love you, honey. Justin. Carolyn Miller is so good. And Kim and Lewis and Dr. Zoe. See, I didn't see any of these names. Rachel Catherine. Carolyn. Joni Reed. That's a new one. I'm so glad to see you. I mean, it's new tonight for me to see. Lisa. We're at the top. That's it. Lisa Hill and Ashley. Thank y'all all for listening. Thank y'all for being a part of this. And we, I just thank God for what he's doing. Whatever it is, it's his thing, not mine. Whatever he wants to do. I love you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Sleep good tonight. Know your love. I'm just holding you, wrapping you in that love, the Father's love. And and if you don't know Jesus, I just ask the Lord that that your heart beat, beats for him and that you find him. Let him find you. All you got to do is start looking and praying for Pray and forget. Cry for forgiveness. Ask him to come into your heart. Love you. If you've got a testimony, if you want to share it, you need to share it. So the Lord keep on blessing you. I love you. Good night. Safety and protection over everybody this week. There'll be no, no problems anywhere. And no COVID, nothing. we we bind every negative thing out of our life and we loosen us all the promises of God in Jesus' name. Good night. Bye-bye.